Joining us now with his thoughts on the review is David Hammond. David is from the University of Waterloo, where he's a professor of public health and where he studies cannabis use and policy. David, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Listen, I want to begin with your assessment at where we are today, nearly four years after cannabis was legalized in this country. Have you seen any trends that should perhaps raise concerns? Well, I think we can probably start with maybe saying what has worked. What has worked, we now have a legal market. Uh, we have somewhere around 75% of the market that shifted to legal stores. So that means billions of dollars going to you know, legitimate businesses and some government revenue. Um, and consumers, for the most part, seem to be relatively happy. So in that sense, I think it's, it's achieved its main objectives of getting up a regulated market. Um, what are some of the concerns? Uh, we've seen a bit of an increase in use, not as much as some people feared, but it has gone up a little bit. Um, you know, one of the concerns that we have is where is the settling point going to be for stores? So most Canadians, certainly those that live in big cities, will see many more cannabis stores. It's a bit of a Goldilocks challenge, which is what's the right amount of stores? We want enough that people shift to the legal market. We don't want so many that it starts to promote cannabis use. We also have questions about the types of products out there. It was shifting before legalization, but what we've seen even over the last three years is uh, more use of higher THC, stronger products. These are things like vape liquids. These are uh, solid concentrates, things like that. So, um, you know, I, I would say that the, the first goal of establishing the market has been accomplished. And now we can start to ask ourselves, what type of regulated market do we want? And, and I think that's what the government will be asking. Well, it's interesting. Uh, you mentioned a couple of examples, and I did want to ask you whether or not the landscape has actually changed, because there is now this access to things like edibles and cannabis uh, vape pens, which you, you reference. From a public health perspective, then, has the challenge now changed for researchers like you and for policymakers? Oh, I think so. Uh, you know, a lot of people listening, you know, might remember the 1970s, where THC levels were about 2 to 5%. So in the average joint or dried flour, it's now 20%, maybe even higher than that. And then we have these other classes of products where the THC level is 60, 70, 80%. Now these products would exist without legalization, but now that we have a regulated market, what do we do about it? Um, there are concerns about edibles that are in candy form, you know, gummy bears, and chocolates. Uh, we you know, we do have a challenge with accidental consumption and people trying to figure out how much to take. Uh, and what we haven't really done is a really good job about educating consumers about the different types of products and really educating them about THC. So most Canadians will know, well, a beer is about this and a hard liquor is about this uh, strength. But for THC cannabis products, we're really at the starting point in terms of teaching consumers about some of the differences between products, um, how to sort of take in the amount that you want, and really think about are there some types of products that maybe don't play an important role in a market, especially mm -hmm. those really strong THC products. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been implications for things like impaired driving when it comes to cannabis use. And as you uh, are talking about here, the, the perhaps knowledge gap around cannabis itself. But, you know, I was listening to Carolyn Bennett today, the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, as they were announcing this review. And, and to hear it from her, she says that, that the use amongst young children has not increased significantly but I do think it's worthwhile to, to talk about the impact on, on cannabis and younger cohorts, given that we are dealing with different products and, as you say, stronger products in many instances. Yeah, and that's one of the big questions is what happens to use among young people. Everyone agrees that that shouldn't really be happening. It's a good news, bad news story. It hasn't gone up that much. It was already high before legalization. We have one of the highest prevalence of cannabis use among young people in the world. Um, look, one success has been that Canada has very strong federal rules that limit advertising and marketing. We have not seen greater exposure uh, to advertising and marketing for cannabis products. That's key. But you know what? The answer to the question of how has legalization impacted young people, we're really only going to be able to answer that in five or ten years. What it means is my kids, other people's kids, growing up, with the legal market, walking by the stores, maybe seeing some of that marketing. And 
only then will we really be able to give the answer of, um, you know, how has it changed use among young people? I've got about 30 seconds left here, David, but, you know, as this review gets underway, if there's one thing you want to come out of it, what is your biggest hope? Well, I think I said it before, but how do we want to regulate it? Do we want uh, really high potent products or are there some products we should take out? What's the right number of retail stores? Um, you know, we need to think about how it's working for the industry, how it's working for public health and how it's working for consumers. And I think Canada has an excellent chance uh, not just to answer the questions for ourselves, but to the many other countries that are looking to do the same thing. David Hammond, really good to speak with you. Thank you for the time. My pleasure.